Eight Times Eminem Went Too Far For the entirety of his two-decade career, Eminem has made a brand out of stirring up controversy. Whether it was his shockingly violent and obscene lyrics, his antics with his on-and-off-again ex-wife Kim, or his real-life legal trouble, few rappers are as used to being vilified and dissected as Eminem. After failing to stir up industry interest with his release of his 1996 album Infinite, Eminem began to change his persona to the edgier, angrier version of himself that we know and love today. The release of his 1997 album The Slim Shady LP solidified Eminem's violent alter ego Slim Shady and gained him enough attention to land himself a deal with Interscope Records, and famously end up as the pupil of Dr. Dre. Since that moment, Eminem has continued to find himself at the center of countless controversies, feuds, and scandals. Even now at the age of 48, Eminem still finds himself receiving backlash from his fans his haters, and even the federal government. Before we begin, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Now, here's eight times that Eminem went too far. Number 8. Recording Kim Back when Eminem's violent lyrics were still considered shocking, he was the poster boy for the suburban moms who believed rap was corrupting their children. Eminem, of course, did little to distance himself from this. If anything, one could assert that he began to release content made specifically to enrage these groups. And his 2000 song, Kim, is no exception. Based around his growing frustrations over his marital problems with his wife Kim Mathers, and complications with their custody battle, Eminem released the song Kim. Him, a graphic, stream-of-consciousness-style song where he depicts, in great detail, the kidnapping and murder of his ex. On the track, Mathers plays himself and Kim, creating a vivid depiction of the events. And while critics now often refer to Kim as one of Eminem's most memorable and genre-influencing songs, it was met with massive backlash during the initial release. In 2000, many news outlets, citizens, and feminist organizations rallied against the song, arguing its blatant depiction of domestic violence actually glorified harming women. According to a popular rumor, Kim Mather's 2000 suicide attempt is said to be the direct result of witnessing Eminem perform Kim live in Detroit. While this has never been fully confirmed, Eminem has seemingly acknowledged this version of events in his music. Number 7. Dissing Lana Del Rey I think everyone is already familiar with the fact that Eminem has repeatedly dissed women celebrities in his music, but it still shocked everyone when in a 2000 2014 Shady Records Cypher, he recited the lyrics, I'll punch Lana Del Rey right in the face twice, like Ray Rice in Broad Daylight. And that's not to mention the homophobic lyrics that preceded the line. M faced a surprising amount of criticism for those lines, and even had other celebrities coming to Lana's defense, with Azalea Banks saying he should quote, go back to his trailer park. To make things worse, Lana said that she idolized Eminem and listened to him a lot growing up, and Eminem ended up backpedaling, saying he only used Used her name because it rhymed. It doesn't seem like she took it personally though. That wouldn't be the last time that M mentioned her, except next time it would be in a more positive light. Number 6. Using Slurs Eminem has racked up criticism repeatedly over the past few decades for his cavalier use of homophobic slurs in his music. Initially, M would defend himself saying his use of the slurs was a product of his upbringing, and that use of the word in and around Detroit was not meant to be derogatory to gay people. However, as years passed, Eminem began to severely restrict and then ultimately completely stop his use of the words. This changed in the song Fall off his 2018 album Kamikaze. Angered by recent criticism from Tyler the Creator, Eminem refers to Tyler with a homophobic slur, a reference to Tyler's recent revelations about his sexuality on his album Flower Boy. The lyric instantly garnered intense backlash against M, with fans pointing out that those type of slurs, even used jokingly, have no place in modern rap music. Eminem would later issue a former apology and admit that using the slur, quote, was the wrong choice of words. Eminem would continue on to say, quote, In my quest to hurt him, I didn't realize there were a lot of other people I was hurting too. Imagine telling someone in 1998 that Eminem would admit that type of introspection. Number 5. Supporting Chris Brown M is no stranger to controversial lyrics. In fact, his entire career is based around them. 
Eminem's status as one of the most highly selling and critically acclaimed rappers usually affords him a certain level of leniency with his lyrics. He's said some things that would undoubtedly get smaller artists cancelled. But even M is not completely protected from facing backlash because of his shocking lyrics. In November of 2019, the internet got its hands on a leaked copy of a scrapped Eminem song from 2009 called Things Get Worse. On the track, Eminem references the famous night where Chris Brown violently abused Rihanna while driving in his car. M appeared to take Chris's side, claiming the actions were understandable and he would do the same thing. The leak was shocking to many of Eminem's fans, specifically because Mather and Rihanna have collaborated a handful of times, including on the radio hit Love the Way You Lie. A representative from Eminem claimed that the content was ultimately scrapped precisely because of its shocking nature, saying that, quote, of course Eminem and Rihanna have a great relationship, unquote. And while Rihanna has made no public mention of the track, Mathers decided to take responsibility for it, saying that he, quote, didn't even remember writing the lyrics, and extending a wholehearted apology on his track Zeus. Number 4, His Feud with Christopher Reeve If you've been listening to Eminem for a while, you might have noticed that M seems to have a very, very strong dislike for the late Christopher Reeve, best known for his role as Superman in the 70s and the 80s. In 1995, Reeve was in a serious accident while riding a horse, and was paralyzed from the neck down for the remainder of his life. Reeve would go on to become a major advocate and activist for protection of disabled individuals until his death in 2004. If a disabled actor turned philanthropist seems like a strange person for Eminem to have a feud with, that's because there's really no feud at all. Despite Eminem's repeated attacks against Reeve on at least eight different songs, it seems that Mathers randomly picked a celebrity he knew would spark controversy and then really committed to the bit. And the plan seemed to have worked. After his first lyrics mocking Reeve's disability, public outrage against Eminem was at an all-time high. Eminem's obsession with mocking Reeve and pop culture celebrities in general was a major source of ire for America's more conservative crowd. However, the controversy seemed to just propel Eminem's fame even further. Do you think those lines against Reeve go too far? Number 3, His Run-In with the Feds Eminem's music has landed him in legal trouble a few times throughout his career, including a court battle with his own mother for slander and defamation. But Eminem's political views have landed him in hot water with the United States Secret Service not once, but twice. After Eminem's vocal disapproval of George W. Bush's involvement in the Iraq War, Eminem released the 2003 song, We As Americans. One of the lines on the album, which alludes to the death of the president, which the Secret Service investigated as a potential threat. Eminem found himself being visited by the feds once more in 2018, when some of his lyrics from one of his ciphers caught the attention of the Secret Service. The lines, which refer to Mathers attacking Donald Trump, caused the Secret Service to show up at Eminem's door and investigate him. Luckily, the Secret Service decided to press no charges in each instance, as they determined the lines to be too vague to substantiate a threat. Number 2, Blackballed Machine Gun Kelly Eminem made headlines two years ago for reigniting a feud with Machine Gun Kelly. The two's beef stems all the way back to 2012, when MGK casually called Eminem's daughter, Haley Mathers, hot. Though Eminem stayed silent on the issue initially, in 2015, MGK claimed that he was blackballed from appearing on Shade 95, or any other media programs that had a direct or indirect link to Eminem's umbrella company. Eminem finally made his first direct reference to Kelly on his album Kamikaze, which led to the infamous outright beef between the two. Kelly released his track Rap Devil, which was countered by M's Kill Shot. Though Kelly was praised for his efforts, most critics agreed Eminem had won. After the release of his 2019 album Hotel Diablo, Kelly doubled down on his claims that Eminem was forcing media outlets to ignore Kelly's output, claiming the album fell flat because, quote, no one wanted to review it. Do you think M really had MGK blacklisted? If so, did he go too far? Number 1, His Feud with Mariah Carey Though Eminem has battled through enough feuds to make it the subject of its own video, perhaps one of the longest running and uncomfortable feuds has been with pop legend Mariah Carey. In 2002, Eminem claimed that he and Mariah dated for six months after meeting up to discuss a collaboration, a claim that Carey vehemently denied. Mariah's public rejection of the claim angered M, leading to a series of not-so-subtle jabs at Mariah on a variety of songs. Mariah responded with a few of her own clapbacks on 
on her own songs. This pattern continued on and off until 2009, when Eminem wished Mariah's new husband, Nick Cannon, luck in their relationship. The track led to the release of Carrie's song, Obsessed, and a music video where she openly mocks Eminem. In response, Mathers released the song, The Warning, in which he attacks Carrie for her struggles with alcoholism, reveals details about her residence, and splices in snippets of voicemails which supposedly were recorded by Mariah herself. The feud laid the groundwork for Eminem's long-standing feud with Nick Cannon. The two have traded off a variety of disses over the past decade. Personally, we think the entire issue is getting a little tired, but you have to give M credit for his commitment. Did we miss any times where Eminem went too far? Let me know in the comments. And before you leave, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to our channel.